Okay, so we are going to continue our series on how to figure out what the best move is going to be and using knowing, knowing about checkmate patterns to help you figure that out in a game. So there's just so many choices you can make in a game and so figuring out the best move is sometimes tricky. Uh, we've talked about there are two types of moves. There's the positional moves and there are the tactical moves. Positional moves, you're moving a piece to a better place. Uh, you're trying to help your other pieces or give your pieces more attacking squares or keep them safer. And a lot of the opening moves are positional in nature. So you're trying to control the center, you're trying to keep your king safe, you're trying to develop your pieces, getting them active into the game. Tactical, mate, tactical moves are those that can either lead to checkmate or lead to gaining material. And a lot of times the way you gain material is you threaten a checkmate. Okay? So some of the gains that we've talked about before are forks and pins and skewers and revealed attacks. And the checkmates that most kids are familiar with are back rank mate, the lawn mower, and the kiss of death. And so we've started learning some new checkmates because that might help you figure out your move in a game. And so over the last couple of videos, we learned the opera mate. In the opera mate, the bishop protects a rook, attacking the king on the back rank that has his escaped square blocked. Okay, what we're going to show in this video is how that can turn into something called the swallow's tail mate when it's moved more into the center of the board. All right, so we're going to flip over to my analysis boards on chess.com now. Okay, so right here, you see this is our typical opera mate, where this queen could be a queen or a rook, okay? And so see how the queen is protected by the bishop, so the king can't take the queen, but it's also unable to move to any of these other squares because the queen or the bishop attacks all of them. And the one square that's not being attacked is blocked by his own piece. Okay, well what happens if we move all of these pieces up one square? Okay, well notice still most of the squares are blocked for this king, right? The king can't move to e3, the king can't move to d3, the king can't move to e1 or d1, and it can't move to c2 because the queen is blocking all five of those squares. The king can't capture the queen because it's protected by the bishop, and the king is blocked from c3 by its own piece. But the king can move to c1 and so the king can escape. But if white had a piece on c1, it can't escape. Okay, so the trick with this mate, what you're looking for is a king blocked off from moving by his own pieces on two adjacent diagonals. So in this case, the adjacent diagonal would be c1 and c3, right? It would not work if it was opposed diagonals like e3 and c1. Uh, but with c1 and c3, this queen can block all the king's moves. That also means this bishop could be over here, because the queen's the one attacking all the squares. It could be a knight on g3. It could be a rook on e8. It could be even a pawn on f3 or a king. Just any piece supporting the queen adjacent to a king that's blocked by his own pieces on diagonals. Now. You may notice there's one piece that I could put on this diagonal that would mess this whole thing up, and that would be a knight. If a knight was sitting here on c3, the knight could just capture the queen on e2. So if there is a knight sitting on one of these, you have to make sure that knight is pinned to the king so it can't move. But other than a knight, any other piece will do. So let's take a look at a position in a game. So let's say black has just moved the queen here to f5 to offer a trade of queens all right so looks like black if black could pull off this queen trade black should be winning easily right because black's king can easily step in and capture the pawn the rook can come around and do some damage uh, it's got this outside passer but white may notice hey look the king is here blocked by two adjacent diagonals so if I could put my queen on g5, this king would have nowhere to go. So I can make sure the queen doesn't capture my queen by pinning the black queen. 
And so the black queen, if the king moves, or pawn moves, or anything like that, then I'm just going to capture the queen with my queen. Okay? If the queen captures the bishop, my white queen is able to come in and deliver the checkmate. And that is game. Okay, so let's take a look at another position. This is a position that showed up in one of Bobby Fischer's games. See if you can take a look at this and find our uh, Swallow's Tell mate in this game. All right, if, you don't, if you're still looking, then, um, then go ahead and pause your video because in this one, the king's not quite set up. He's gonna have to move somewhere to get into the right position. All right, so hopefully you see that if the king was one step forward, it would be in the perfect position to get checkmated because the rook and the queen would then be on those diagonals. So I just need to chase the king out of the way. So if this queen moves to this square, putting the king in check, the king has a couple moves. You have a few options. You could block with the rook, but that would relate, result in checkmate by the queen taking it, and it's something very close to the kiss of death. So the king could step forward. If the king steps forward, then the queen comes over and it is checkmate. Okay? Now the king could also step forward another way. He could step forward this way over to d7, which would also result in checkmate, and that is called the dovetail mate, which is what we're going to learn about next time. Okay, so hopefully this was useful to you. Go get some practice, work those tactics, and get ready for some chess games online. All right, see you later.